Hello, I'm Sergei and welcome to a 3D scanning part of a mesh to HRTF tutorial. The 3D scanning tutorial is divided in two parts. This is the first part where we will go through everything you need to know before actual scanning session. The second part will show an actual live scanning example where I scan a camarm binaural mannequin with an iPhone and provide comments about the process. In this video we will not talk about mesh to HRTF itself but instead we will cover one practical example how you can 3D scan a head and ears for use in mesh to HRTF using some common Apple devices. In the written tutorial you can read about other 3D scanning alternatives, including professional 3D scanners which are ideal for the task, but as of 2022 the only 3D scanning method that is good enough for mesh to HRTF, available globally in millions of devices, and quite affordable involves Apple Face ID sensors. I hope that over time we will be able to add more affordable 3D scanning options to our list as there are great hardware alternatives such as Intel RealSense or Infineon Real Free Base products, but it is not trivial to find suitable software for these alternatives. Notably, it can be cheaper and easier to borrow or buy a second-hand iPhone than to get another 3D scanning device. Before we go into the details of how to scan with an iPhone, let's talk a little bit about what do we actually want to scan. First of all, we do not want to simulate hair. We want to simulate the skin surface of the head and ears. It means that, if possible, you should shave, cut the hair shorter, tie long hair together, and perhaps use a tight swimming hat or a wig cap to compress and organize hair. Any remaining hair will need to be edited away afterwards. If a person wears glasses, they should not be included in the model. Glasses have small details and are transparent, which is a problem for most 3D scanners. And in general, if you are not going to use iPhone, please check the recommendations for the specific scanner technology which you are going to use. For the 3D scan itself, not everything is equally important. The most important part are the ears themselves. For the ear pinna you want to use the maximum possible resolution and data quality. Then we need to 3D scan of a complete head. Here the precision requirements are much more relaxed. Most 3D scanners will accumulate measurement error as you move around a bigger object. But that's not really an issue because we can merge the highly detailed left and right ear meshes afterwards. Shoulders are rather interesting. It's not entirely clear if you should or should not include them in the simulation, but it's better to have them scanned so that you can decide afterwards. Finally, it's a really good idea to have multiple takes for every scan you do. It doesn't matter how good 3D scanner you have, things can go wrong, and if you have multiple takes to choose from, you'll be very happy afterwards. Now about iPhones and iPads. Since iPhone X, Apple released many iPhones and iPads without physical home button. All these devices include a dedicated structured light sensor for face recognition, which can be used for mesh to HRTF. Note that current Apple LiDARs are not suitable for high resolution scanning of the head and ears, so the Pro branded devices have no advantages over regular models with Face ID. Unfortunately, if you have post-2021 Apple device, the Face ID sensor may no longer be as good as we want. iPhone 13 introduced a more compact and much lower quality Face ID sensor, which still works for face recognition, but the sensor data is much noisier and therefore less suitable for mesh to HRTF 3D scanning purposes. It is hard to predict if the 3D scanning of the latest Apple devices will improve, but at the moment it may be best to pick an older model. As of 2022, these are the models which are known to work very well. It can be as old as the original iPhone X, all the way to iPhone 12. In addition, some iPad Pro models can be as good as well. There really is not much difference between iPhone X and iPhone 12, except for the amount of memory and CPU performance, which means that uh, your experience with iPhone 12 will be smoother, but the 3D scan quality will be as good on the older iPhone X. Then to do the scanning, you need an app. As we know, Face ID sensor is primarily meant for face recognition. Therefore, any 3D scanning functionality needs to be added by third-party app. 
here are some requirements for a 3D scanning app which would do the trick. And Mesh to HRDF project is not affiliated with, with any app. But we do have experience with one specific app called Hegas 3 d which is the one I used for this tutorial. This is a commercial app which requires about $10 in-app purchase to unlock its functionality. The rest of the tutorial will be showing how to use this Hegas 3 d app to get the scan we need. When you open Hegas 3 d app, you can keep the precision on 0.5 millimeters, and the range setting uh, can also be left at the default. If you click on the gallery button and then on the GRCOG, you can get to the app settings. Here it's important that your units are set to millimeters and that the enable infinite scanning is on. Apart from that, it's good to have a new scanning method on as well. The rest of the settings is probably already good. Now let's look at the scanning process itself. First of all, let's talk about geometric references. Human head is not ideal to use as a tracking reference for 3D scanners. And sometimes it's good to give your 3D scanner a bit of extra help. The idea behind geometric references is to provide something more than just skin and uh, ears for scanner to orient itself. It really can be just about anything, but uh, here are a couple of examples of what I have tried before. Now moving on to the actual scanning process with an iPhone. As we are effectively using a selfie camera, it's good to understand that this sensor actually has limited range, so you can stand behind the person you are scanning and be entirely outside of the field of view. This neat trick allows you to walk around the subject and do all the scanning while always maintaining a good view of what you are doing. For the rest of the details of how to scan, please look at the second part of this video tutorial, which is the next video in the playlist. In the end of a written tutorial, there is a more tips section. Here I recommend to read through this after watching the second part of a 3D scanning video. For example, you can read that it is a bad idea to try to scan yourself, as the data quality will suffer. Or that it is useful to announce to the subject when you start and finish the scan, as well as keep them updated what exactly are you scanning. Because it can be quite frustrating to sit with your mouth and eyes shut without any understanding how long will this go on. Now please continue to the next video which shows an example of the actual 3D scanning process.